floppy disks. To my 12-year-old nephew, they're the save icon. He doesn't actually know they're disks. In fact, he's never seen one. Anyway, the other day, someone said something to me that seemed, well, a bit off. Anyone who ever had an old floppy disk knows that its capacity for your use was always smaller than the stated capacity, just as it is today with large hard drives. 800k floppies only gave you 640k, 1 meg floppies gave you 800k, and 1.44 meg floppies gave you 1.16 megabytes. Now, I was pretty sure I'd managed to store more than 1.16 meg on a 3.5 inch floppy disk without any weird formats like Microsoft's DMF or IBM's DSED. So I pulled out a floppy drive and inserted the one floppy disk that I could find. I shoved some random files on there and I managed to fit on 1.18 meg with room to spare. So I won the internet. Hurrah! But that got me thinking. What is the maximum amount of data that you can fit on a floppy disk? Now I didn't have the time, the inclination or the hardware to test every type. So I'm just going to go with standard 1.44 meg 3.5 inch disk. But before I start, there's a couple of problems. Problem one, what's a megabyte? Well, back in the early days of home computers, everyone knew that eight bits made a byte. I'm well aware that there are computer systems out there that use bytes that are not eight bits, and I've even used some of them, but let's not get into that. And that 1024 bytes was a kilobyte. And 1024 kilobytes made a megabyte. 1024 megabytes made a gigabyte. And then terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, yottabytes, and it's turtles all the way down. You might have noticed that if you buy a 500 gigabyte hard drive and plug it into your PC, it's only 465 gigabytes. So what gives? It's actually not because of the file catalog of the disk. It's because a megabyte isn't always a megabyte. Or rather, there are two different ways of counting them. Ugh. In the olden days of computing, it was found necessary to have names for byte multiples to make things easier. As everything was counted in powers of two, because computers use binary, the plan was just to use the SI unit prefixes as they pretty much corresponded. A thousand something is a kilo something, so 1024 bytes was close enough, and those extra 24 didn't really matter. This seemed fine, until the disparity started getting too big. At the kilobyte size, the difference between 1000 and 1024 is only 2.4%. Once you get to the megabyte size, it's 4.8% and then 9.95% and so on and so on. It starts to really add up. And that is why your 500 gigabyte hard drive isn't 500 gigabytes. So in the late 90s, it was decided to make megabytes, etc. strictly conform to the SI prefixes. A thousand bytes was a kilobyte. Not a thousand twenty-four, a thousand. A thousand kilobytes was a megabyte, and so on. Now given that many people were still going to need to use the base 2 versions, there were going to have to be different terms for those. So 1024 bytes were a kibby byte, 1024 kibby bytes were a mebby byte, 1024 mebby bytes were a gibby byte, and then it started all the way down. Now that would avoid confusion between the decimal terms and the base 2 binary terms. Except no one used the new terms, or worse still, people mixed them up. And that's why your 500 gigabyte hard drive isn't 500 gigabytes. Or rather, it actually is. The problem is that when you plug it into your Windows machine, Windows uses the base2 binary definitions, and so it should be saying Gibby bytes, but it doesn't. It says gigabytes. So the hard drive companies mean one thing, and Microsoft means another. The gap between those two figures is nothing to do with file tables or anything like that. Okay, so problem two is related to problem one. What's a floppy disk megabyte? Or is it maybe byte? Ah, three and a half inch HD floppies are 1.44 megabytes, aren't they? These disks have 2,880 sectors, more on them later, and these are 512 bytes each. So if you count that in binary kibby bytes, that is 1,440 kibby bytes. These are awful terms to say, aren't they? If you then express that in decimal megabytes, you get 1.44 megabytes. Yeah, they mixed two types of unit. The calculation is done in binary, but the result is presented in decimal. Oh, 
So what's this tracks and sectors thing? Well, discs are arranged in tracks. These are concentric rings on the disc surface, and these are split further into sectors, which are an arc of a track. Each sector can hold 512 bytes, so with 80 tracks, and a total of 2,880 sectors at 512 bytes each, a 3.5 inch HD Ploffy should be able to hold 1,474,560 bytes. But can it? Well, this is what I decided to find out, and where I hit problem 3. I need some floppy disks. I actually only had one lying around. And given the amount of floppy disks I've bought over the years, where are they all? Well, either way, there is another problem with this. Have a look at this. This is a floppy disk that I've put files onto and then I've deleted them. The disk is empty, but it's still showing 1K as being used. Now, there are various things that can cause this, so in order to avoid anything like that, what I need are some brand new, never used floppy disks. And that's not so easy. If floppy disks are still being made, and I don't know that they are, new ones sure are hard to find. So what I need are some vintage floppy disks that are still in sealed boxes, so I know for sure they haven't been used before. Oh, and they ought to be pre-formatted. I don't know what Windows does to format a floppy disk these days, so ones formatted by the manufacturer ought to be the most authentic. What I need are floppy disks like these. I managed to find three boxes on eBay. I opened the first box and used them for my initial testing. That leaves two sealed boxes. I don't know how old these disks are, there's no dates on them. Chances are they're around 25 years old. And that's also a problem, because the lifespan of magnetic media is reckoned to be about five years. How many of these disks will still work? Now I'm going to expect these disks to hold 512 bytes per sector. So if I'm going to be saving the maximum amount of files onto a floppy disk, I need the files that I create to be at least multiples of 512 bytes, so that they fully occupy a sector but don't go over. Now just for extra fun, things like folders, directories in the old days, they take up space as well. But there's one folder that kind of doesn't, and that's the root folder, when you don't make a folder on it at all. And the root folder, it can hold a maximum of 224 entries. So that's a maximum of 224 files. So I can't just build the disk with 512 byte files because it'll run out of capacity in the root directory long before it runs out of disk space. So I need to put fewer than 224 files on the disk. So instead, I'm going to use 8K files. These 8K files should each take up 16 sectors. If I could use all 1,474,560 bytes of the disk, I should be able to write 180 of these files to it. But looking at a completely blank disk in Windows, it shows the capacity as being 1,457,664 bytes. There's a slight disparity there. What can be causing that? Well, there's a few extra things on a floppy disk. The very first thing is there's one sector on the disk used for the boot sector. And that is, of course, 512 bytes. Now, once you get beyond the boot sector, there are the two FATs. FAT, File Allocation Table. And the File Allocation Table keeps track of where everything is. And because the FAT table is so vital, it's on the disk twice. Now the FAT table takes up nine sectors. That's nine of these 512 byte sectors. And because there are two FAT tables, it takes up a total of 18 sectors. So, if you can do the maths, there is one sector used for the boot sector, that's 512 bytes. There are 18 sectors used for the two FAT tables, nine sectors each, which is 9,000 216 bytes and then there are finally 14 sectors used for the root directory or folder and 14 sectors is 7168 bytes so if you add all these together you get a figure of 16896 bytes and if you subtract 16896 
from 1,474,560, you get 1,457,664. So that should be the maximum amount of space available on a floppy disk. Right, so first of all, I need to create an 8K dummy file. And I'm using this very nice little program for doing it. Links in the description below, links to everything in the description below. And I'm going to get it to make an 8K file. And in actual fact, I'm not even going to trust its word for what a kilobyte is. I'm going to specify it in bytes. 8192 bytes. That's 16 times 512. And I'm also going to make it non-compressible. Just in case anything somehow tries to compress them. And now the next step, I'm going to have to write a piece of code. Now, I'm going to just write a batch file. Batch files are simply a text file of commands. And, well, these are effectively like DOS commands. I'm going to be running this from the command line in Windows. This is a very simple batch file that I've written for copying files onto the floppy disk. Now we'll go through it line by line just so you know exactly what it's doing. The first line, at echo off. What that does is to tell the computer not to display all its output on the screen. It just stops it parroting everything back at you. And the next line, this sets up a for next loop. So it's for slash L percent percent A in 11182 brackets. And what this says is for a list of numbers, percent percent A is just a variable for counting these. Uh, in tells it the list of numbers. It starts at 1, it proceeds in increments of 1, and it counts to 180. And then do, do the stuff in the brackets. Now, echo percent percent A just says print to the screen what the value of percent percent A is. So, one, two, three, and so on. And when you do that, copy dummy.8k. I've put that in quotation marks. Strictly speaking, I don't have to. Um, you need quotation marks if there are any spaces or unusual things in your file names, but there aren't, but I've just done it for the sake of safety. So, copy dummy.8k. That's the 8k dummy file that we created. Copy it to a colon slash dummy dot percent percent a. In other words, it's going to copy dummy 8k to dummy dot 1 and then dummy dot 2. Because otherwise I would have to copy over, well, almost 180 files, one at a time, renaming them as I go. So this just does through all that. And finally, there is a close brackets command that says the loop is finished. If we haven't reached 180, go back and do it again. If we have, continue on. And there's nothing afterwards, so it just stops. So I'm going to open up our Windows command line here. And I'm going to run my little program. It's going to loop around 180 times. Now, if I'm correct, this should run 177 times and then fail and leave seven and a half K left over. So let's let it do that. So there we go. The program failed at exactly the point that I thought it should. And if we have a look at the disk to see how much space is used and how much space is free, It turns out you can indeed store 1,457,664 bytes on a floppy disk. Now Windows will tell you that's 1.38 megabytes. Okay, so after all that, we've reached a conclusion. If you don't include the boot sector, the FAT tables, and the storage required for the root directory, then floppy disks are 1 million 474,560 bytes. And if you do count in the boot sector, the fat tables, and the root directory, 
then floppy disks are 1,457,664 bytes, and you can use every last bit of that if you're very careful. However, if you convert 1,457,664 bytes into decimal megabytes, the answer you get is 1.457664 megabytes. And if you convert 1,457,664 bytes into binary mebibytes, you get 1.390137 mebibytes. Windows says the disk can hold 1.38 mebibytes. It incorrectly expresses them as megabytes, but it holds 1.39. And the box says it can hold 1.44 megabytes, but it can hold 1.45 megabytes. I'm actually somewhat more confused than when I started. It is what it is. Until next time, ta-ra.